This is Sony ZV-1. I think it's the best vlogging camera or camera for YouTubers, at least for now. Let's get started. In the subway without a mask, I'm a criminal. What's good guys, my name is Alek Nikitin, you're watching No Limits On channel and today we're having a pretty nice location right here in Gelenjik. It's near Sochi in Russia and here is the golf club and this is the vlogging mode 24mm on the Sony ZV-1, the built-in microphone with the dead can on it and let's see if it's any good. And today we're having a look at a pretty not very pricey but very nice and compact camera actually it's the size of the iphone 8 even less <laughs> than the iphone 8 and uh, it's a pretty competitive camera and very capable one so let's get started <laughs> let's start off with the package with the kit the basic kit has not a lot of uh, things in it so basically the um, battery, this furry windshield, uh, the protective cover for your MI shoe and um, the cable for charging and that's it. So I don't see any reason to show you the box itself. The size and weight, the size is very small compared to for instance this Tamron 17 to 28. It's heavier, it's bigger and this camera is a very capable one. Then the weight, it's 300 grams and it's a really, really pocket sized camera. You can definitely put it into your pocket without any issues and I've been using it in Gelenjik, Russia. So I'm gonna show you a lot of footage from Gelenjik. It's near Sochi where the Olympics, Olympics were. So if you see a lot of footage, don't be scared that I switch locations. Let's move on. This little beauty has 20 megapixel sensor. It's a one inch sensor, not the biggest one, of course. It's a very small sensor basically, but it can shoot up to 24 frames per second in stills mode. And it has the Biongs X processor inside of this body. Also the MI shoe, which is the multi-interface shoe. So you can connect your wireless kind of wireless microphones, they plug into the shoe and digitally connect to the camera, which is nice because the a7S III, a7C, they have this feature as well. And the battery is uh, 1200 milliamp hours, it's around 240 photos or one hour in 4K video. I have no complaints about the battery, it's a very small one and basically since it's providing me with one hour 4K video, a pretty crisp one, I'm satisfied with it. Wrong site. Again. Come on. Like this. This little camera has unlimited recording time, so basically since you have the juice in your battery and the you know, memory in your memory card, you can record indefinitely. And since this camera doesn't lose the juice while it's charging via a power bank or something, it's a great solution for streaming. I've been streaming with this camera for two and a half hours in 4K. The signal was cross-converting from 4K to 1080p in Aiden Mini from Blackmagic and this camera didn't have any issues and I can say that if you stream in 4K and the Atom Mini um, converts the signal to 1080p it's a much crisper image because I was streaming from the A6300, the camera which is above, in 1080p the HDMI out was 1080p and it was much softer image than from this camera so it's a great solution for streaming. And as well, this camera has no overheating and of course it has the high temperature mode, so it doesn't overheat as well. I wasn't able to overheat this camera in Gelenjik, a very hot place near the Black Sea, so that's a great addition to this camera. And now about the ergonomics. So here we have the MI shoe, of course the microphone, a pretty big one, and it sounds
sounds okay, as you might have noticed. Uh, if, if we apply a little bit of equalization, it will sound even better. It's a little flat from the beginning, but you can manage this out. So guys, now it's the microphone test. One, two, three, mic check. It's pretty windy out here and we have the dead cat on. So let's check if it protects the sound from the wind. And I'm not really talking too loud, actually. So mic check once again. On off button, but also when you open the screen like so, it automatically turns on. And when you flip the screen back with the back cover up, it uh, turns off. So I basically didn't use this uh, button at all. Then we have the mode button. So the mode wheel is gone. The mode button is pretty okay. I was uh, getting used to it for a couple of hours, but then I got used to it completely. Then we have the zoom rocker which is the wide and the telephoto. It zooms pretty fast when it's not recording, but when it's recording, it zooms a little bit slower, which is good. Also the shutter release button. Here we have the custom button and the blurry background button. It's kind of an amateurish feature because what the camera does is basically puts the aperture to f1.8 at the widest end, puts on the ND and uh, adjusts the aperture and the ISO to match the exposure to make it correct. So I don't use this function. Here I have the custom white balance uh, reassigned re button and the big record button right here. The screen itself is okay. It's kind of a A7S III type of screen, 1 million pixels. It's pretty bright. It has the sunny weather mode for stills and for video, not in 4K. In 4K, it dims down a little bit. It's a little tough to see, but I'm okay with it because uh, in this tiny body, no overheating in 4K, we have to make some, you know, Ah, compromises, let me say. Also the grip, this little one is a very thin one. It's not comfortable to use, but here we have the place for our thumb and like so it's a little better. I got used to it because of the size. I think there was no better solution for it. Here we have the doors, the microphone input for better microphones, the multi-interface input so we can charge through this or to connect to your um, computer and also the micro HDMI or mini HDMI, the smaller HDMI for streaming, for instance, or for using an external monitor. I doubt that someone will use an external monitor with it, but anyway. And also here we have the back layout. Here is the function button and you can see my function menu for video editing, not editing, for video making. Here it is, you can assign those uh, in your camera as well. Also here we have the menu button and you have here the my menu page, which is nice. It's still an old menu, not like in A7S III, but you know, it is what it is. It's okay for me. The display button, it's the up one. Then the left one I reassigned to be the adjustment for the volume. The right one is to be the ISO as a default. And the lower one is for your aperture or your shutter changes. You press down, you change your shutter, you press down, you change your aperture, which is okay. There is not a lot of wheels, basically only one wheel, but I was pretty fast in changing the settings. Also here we have the display, not the display, the playback button and the trash can button I have reassigned to be the ND on or off. The ND is pretty great. It's three stops and uh, I enjoy using it. You can see the difference with and without it and the built-in ND is a great feature as well. This camera is a great solution for live streaming. All you need is a video capture card or something like Aiden Mini. And I was streaming in 4K as Gerald Dundon said that if you choose the HDMI output to 4K, but the device itself, I mean the Aiden Mini transcodes it into 1080p, you get a much crisper image. And this camera doesn't overheat and has no record limits. And overall, it's a great solution for streaming. You have a lot of lights when you stream from time to time. And this camera doesn't need uh, to, you know, be in higher ISOs and has the IAF. So it's a great, great streaming solution. And for streaming and for vlogging, I was using Picture Profile 1 and I set the gamma to movie and color mode to movie. And the colors were pretty vibrant, saturated and pretty okay for streaming. And uh, also pretty nice for vlogging. I had to make some little adjustments in post, but overall I was very satisfied with the results.
Also, this camera has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The photos and videos straight from the camera into your smartphone and post in social network, which is nice. And also in the vlogger's kit, you can have a little tripod like so, and you can use it to uh, manipulate the camera via Bluetooth. For instance, shutter release, record button, zoom rocker, and all that stuff. And now let me show you the differences between 1080p and 25p. 1080p in lower bitrate, 1080p in 50 frames per second, 1080p in 120 frames per second, and in 4K mode. Also, this camera records up to 1000 frames per second. 250 is pretty usable and I do like uh, 250 on this camera. It's pretty sharp and looks gorgeous. Of course, you need a lot of light, so better <laughs> use this function outside during the sunlight. And uh, let me show you some examples. The inbuilt microphone is okay, and um, you know, you've heard the sound, with equalization it's a little better, but I have compared it with every mic Lavalier mic and Rode Wireless Go system, so let's see the test. So guys, now I'm testing out the sound from the ZV-1 uh, and its built-in microphone versus the every mic Lavalier mic with Rode Wireless Go. So mic check one, two, mic check one, two, and my eyes are bleeding because it's so sunny out here. How did you like the sound? The camera is now pretty close and now I'm going to put it uh, like straight right here. And uh, one, two, three, mic check. One, two, three, mic check. Low light performance of this camera because of a small, small sensor is pretty poor. Uh, I suggest using 640 ISO as a maximum in movie mode, I mean picture profile one, movie color and movie gamma. For S-Log2, the minimum or the native ISO is 1000, so you can use it in 1000 ISO, and if you expose correctly, you can achieve pretty nice results with good dynamic range, but you need a lot of light, of course. Uh, you can watch my video about S-Log2 for 8-bit cameras right here, and uh, let's see the test and comparison with Sony a7S III in S-Log3. Of course, it's 10-bit, this is only 8-bit, but still, let's watch it. The rolling shutter performance is very surprising for me because it's a real good performer and comparing to the Sony a7S III, it's well known for a good rolling shutter performance as well. I can see almost no rolling shutter in terms of, you know, Sony a6300 if we consider this camera. So basically, I do like this performance in terms of rolling shutter. IBIS system was a surprise for me as well because it has two modes. The basic one, which is standard mode, right here, the standard one, off and active. In active mode, it performs very much like Sony a7S III, so it uh, crops in about 10 to 12 percent. Yeah, it's a little tough for vlogging uh, because the uh, focal length is around 28 to 30 centimeters, <laughs> millimeters. And uh, the results are great. You can watch my test for stabilization and active steady shot is working just flawlessly for me. Shooting handheld with it was just a joy. Now we're testing out the stabilization. Now it's in active mode. I'm using the camera on a selfie stick and I'm pretty normally walking, guys. So, as you can see, the stabilization is pretty okay. Now let's test the standard one. So now I'm using the standard stabilization. It's a little shakier as far as I see. And uh, how do you like the footage? Here is the split screen comparison between the two.
The AF system is really advanced. You can touch to focus and to track. It's a very nice and reliable tracking system as well. And also we have here the IAF mode, which is very nice and 315 phase AF points and very fast autofocusing. So no complaints on autofocus, just flawlessly working, guys. Like Soviet tank, you know. So the AF test, focus on me, on the background, on me, on the background, on me, on the background. These are the fastest settings for the AF and the most responsive setting as well. The product showcase is working when the camera is stable on a stable surface, on a tripod for instance, and the autofocus switches from your eye to the object which is in front of you, in front of the lens. Nice feature, but nothing special. Also, I've shot a video and I plan on posting it very soon, the comparison of this camera and the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Also, three cameras, I mean three lenses actually, they are not interchangeable, fixed, and they have 4K, slow motion, pretty nice microphones, and which one is better for vlogging and for your daily driving. I'll be comparing everything, so here are a few shots, just like a little teaser, and let's move on. In terms of stills and photos, it's an okay camera. It can shoot up to 24 frames per second in 20 megapixels with IAF, very fast, very reliable, but the picture quality is okay. Very small sensor, not a lot of background blur, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's okay for just regular photos, for your family photos. And there is no blackout when you shoot 24 frames per second, which is good. You can basically shoot 24 frames per second in stills and make a video. Even. And one more thing I'd like to mention is uh, the ability to make the manual focus. So how do you manual focus? Of course you cannot touch this part, it's not rotatable, this is not the ring as well. So to be manual focusing you need to switch to MF and then you hit the center button like so and then you simply roll this dial and you choose the point. Not the best one, but you definitely can use it to set the focus once and to leave it and forget it. And in terms of battery life and overall feelings about this camera, I had no issues with the battery. It's uh, pretty okay, I was using it for almost half a day and then I was using the power bank for half an hour and using it for the other half of the day. I was not shooting everything all the time, but uh, it's a pretty reliable camera and uh, I do enjoy using it. I even think about buying one because it's a very low priced camera, in my opinion. It's $700 and for this package, it's a nice price, guys. I was really thinking about buying one and I still think that it's a great top-down camera because my A6300 is overheating almost right now. I see the sign of overheating in 4K. It has the 30 minutes limit and I was already switching between the shots, pressing record, pressing it back. So it's a great top-down camera with great autofocus, different capabilities, super slow motion, ND filters, great for vlogging, for B cam, C cam. So Totally recommend it. I was impressed. I didn't think I can be impressed by this tiny little camera. So guys, what do you think about Sony ZV-1? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below and please smash the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell. I do appreciate it a lot, guys. And thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry that it's been a pretty long video, but I hope you do enjoy it and you do like it. And here's a little outro from Gelenjik once again. Thank you. Bye. And hello from the sunny Gelenjik, Gelenjik in Russia. See you in the next video. Take care. Bye.